So, first up, we have a very cool rover from a stunningly dumb movie, The Armadillo from Armageddon. Uh, we hear in the film that this was designed as a Martian excursion vehicle for a Mars mission, and it was converted into a mobile drilling platform when they installed Bruce Willis's character's amazing super drill that he designed. Apparently, so amazing is he at drilling and designing drills that it's easier to train him and his mates to be astronauts than it is to spend 20 minutes explaining to some astronauts how to switch on a drill. The rover is very cool, though, and very logically designed, which kind of makes me feel bad for what Whatever designer on the film crew spent ages making this plausible realistic rover only for it to be put into this absurd film. It has a big wide cockpit module at the front with wide windows. Obviously you want maximum visibility on a vehicle like this. Uh, it has something which we'll see again in a later rover on this list and that is independently elevated wheels so there's no axles between each wheel because obviously when you're working on this kind of terrain you're going to be in situations where the left or right side of the vehicle is more or less elevated at a given time. So in order to deal with any kind of terrain you want individually articulated wheel mounts. The rover also features RCS thrusters so that it can make uh, adjustments when it's jumping through low gravity, which we actually see happen in the film, although half of them break down. That is an obvious consideration that should be included really on any uh, low gravity ground vehicle. And finally, for reasons known only to Michael Bay, these vehicles carry not one, but two miniguns, one of which is connected to some kind of dubious VR headset harness thing and seems to be positioned for shooting down aircraft? I, I have no idea. This this thing was designed to explore the surface of Mars, so why it has miniguns, I don't know. And they're apparently armor-piercing, because the only thing we ever learn about the, uh, the weird military space shuttles in this film is that they have high-grade military armor plating, and at one point in the film, the armadillo shoots its way out of the hangar bay using its minigun. Also, one thing Alistair pointed out when we were re-watching this film was that there's a safe on the ship which is sealed in order to conceal the one handgun on the ship in order to make sure nobody gets to it. And yet, there are two vehicles equipped with two miniguns each parked on the shuttle, so I have no idea what's going on there. All in all, it's a very cool rover that sadly found itself in one of the stupidest films ever put to screen. Honestly, like, Wallace and Gromit and The Grand Day Out is a more scientifically accurate depiction of spaceflight than this movie. I mean, it's worth watching to laugh at it, but please don't ever think that it's teaching you anything. Okay, so next up we have the RSI Ursa rover from Star Citizen, which of course has very little information right now for obvious reasons. But just from a visual standpoint, it's a very cool, very sturdy looking vehicle. Big six-wheeler, lots of internal space. This is just a completely solid, utilitarian, sensible design. Uh, it's got a single laser repeater turret on the top, which I think is removable and can be replaced with uh, periscopes and sensor equipment and such. And it's designed to be included in the ventral deployment bay of the Constellation Aquila, which is a very very cool ship that I've already talked about on Space Dock before. I generally prefer this one to the uh, the smaller Tumbril dune buggy style vehicles that the game has, as this is more of a solid excursion vehicle, long distance kind of rover. Like I said, there's not much I can say about this at this stage, but I really like the design overall, and I think it deserved a place on this list. Next up, the ND1 Nomad from Mass Effect Andromeda. Now, in spite of that game's many, many flaws, I think we can all agree that the human vehicle design is pretty much on point for the entire game. The Nexus, the Arcs, the Tempest, and the Nomad all look fantastic. This is more focused towards being an exploratory scout rover than the Mako or the Hammerhead ever were, and it can move a lot more quickly in a straight line across flat ground. I personally really enjoyed the driving segments in Andromeda. I think it's just something so innately cool about scout rovers and exploring alien terrain in a big vehicle. It's, it's, it's a very endearing exploration concept. I also quite like how you can see the Mass Effect core at the back of the vehicle underneath the main body. Mass Effect always does a great job of keeping its technology consistent and reminding everybody of how its sci-fi science elements work and always keeping them in the narrative. And this is another great example of that. Uh, the rover doesn't carry any direct weapons, but it does have a shield pulse and afterburners, as well as a number of other utilities, including mining probes and the like. I also quite like how you can manually change the suspension during the gameplay to more easily climb hills or increase your speed over flat terrain. Great little detail. Overall, just a really cool exploration rover and one of the coolest elements of a sadly underwhelming game.
Okay, now we've got another one that there's very little information on, but I wanted to include it because it comes from one of my very favourite movies of all time, The Martian, and that's the Ares 3 support rover. I'm sure it has a more specific name, but there's none revealed in the screenplay. Uh, the main reason I want to include this is because it's quite clearly so reliable and durable. Like, the, the main feature that it plays in the narrative is that it's taken so far out of its design parameters and driven across hundreds upon hundreds of miles over the surface of Mars through terrain it was not designed to cover, and it's patched up with imp- improvised repair jobs and it keeps running and it's one of those kind of serenity galactica style vehicles that's so endearing and forms such a connection with the viewer just because it's so reliable and it goes through so much and keeps going and i love that they included a moment in the film where watney leaves a note on the rover for whoever comes back to salvage it saying to be careful with it because it saved his life and all that great stuff it's a really cool looking vehicle too based off solid uh designs provided by nasa concept art and such the martian is one of the most plausible depictions of near future space technology I've ever seen. It's it's a perfect job really. I would not be at all surprised if vehicles almost exactly like this one are used in our own future to explore the surface of Mars. So fantastic job from that film and if you've not seen The Martian please please go and check it out because I just love that film to bits. Really is fantastic stuff. Okay, in first place, I'm going to put the M35 Mako from Mass Effect. And I know, like Cortez says in Mass Effect 3, it handles like a drunk rhino, and it's been the butt of many jokes from the Mass Effect community for years and years. But I just love this vehicle. It's just, to me, the definitive rover from sci-fi. I love the orbital drops, and it's just such a such a great design. It's such a cool-looking frame. Although it, it is also an infantry fighting vehicle, it's not specifically an explorer rover like the rest of the ones on this list. Back when the first Mass Effect came out, there's just such a great feeling of exploration that was evoked from dropping the Mako onto the surface of an unknown planet and rolling it around the terrain and exploring and fighting Thresher Moors and such. It's just, I mean, James says in Mass Effect 3, he says it's got heart and he's not wrong. It really is a fantastically endearing vehicle and I much prefer it to the Hammerhead. I prefer it to the Nomad and I have to say every time I go to the Normandy Memorial in Mass Effect 2, I always put the statue down on the Mako because it's just a tragic loss and I love the fact, by the way, that um, we see in Mass Effect 2 the Normandy has crashed into a planet through the atmosphere at full speed and been dashed against the landscape in flaming chunks and the Mako has got like a flat tire it's just sort of like slightly on its side and one of its tires has gone flat and I think that says everything you need to know about the durability and dependability of that fantastic vehicle Uh, I won't go on about this too much because I do have a video on this channel specifically about the Mako so go and check that out if you're interested but overall a really really cool sci-fi rover and definitely my favourite so thank you all for watching this is Daniel from Space Dock signing off. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Doc schedule to see what's coming up.